Today, what we're going to be doing is talking about a backup solution that I started using and I quite enjoy. Specifically here, we have Duplicati, I think. This is an open source solution that allows you to create encrypted backups, whether if it's local or somewhere in the cloud. And one of the primary reasons I started using this is I have the absolute disfortune of paying for a Google subscription, specifically uh, workspace is here. I have to use it for business and I have this weird thing where I don't like to upload my data, especially my files, images, things like that into these cloud platforms. But you can see I got four terabytes here and I've started using some of it mostly because this is what the data looks like. If I open up my Duplicati folder, you can see I have Nextcloud and image backups in here. If I open up image, for example, uh, this, this is all they get. So just a bunch of password encrypted zip files, blocks of 50 megabytes, completely hidden and secure from the prowling eyes of Google. And the beautiful thing is it's really, really easy to set up and get going. I'm going to show you all that, including some of the things that I don't necessarily love about the product right after today's sponsor. And that is the Mova V50 Ultra Complete Robot Vacuum. As somebody who is a bit lazy when it comes to household stuff, I love these things, especially when they can mop and vacuum at the same time, and especially when they actually do it well. I've been using one of the higher end Ecovacs, and even though this thing is a bit cheaper, I do like it better, and there's a couple of reasons. One, and it seemed really cool at first, the Ecovacs has a roller that kind of squeegees the water off of it, Turns out the little tray in that thing gets clogged up quite a bit. So now I kind of prefer the two rotating mop pads and a real cool thing about this is they're magnetic. So if you send it to go vacuum somewhere and not mop, it will actually just leave them in the station. Of course, it doesn't have to leave the mop pads behind. It can lift it up. So if it needs to go over a rug or something, it will do that all automatically. The actual wheels can lift up quite a bit. So when it's going to go vacuum somewhere, if there's a small ledge or something or a little divider that it needs to get over, it can do that easily. It's short at under 90 millimeters. So get under things, the little camera actually goes down and retracts when it needs to go under a couch or something. The little side brush can fan out a little bit to get corners better. And something that was actually pretty cool with the Ecovacs is that roller mop can actually swivel out and get the edges. This one can too. It actually can move the mop pad out a little bit to do the same exact thing. The suction's very powerful. They even have a super max mode that you could go ahead and use. And honestly, out of everything, the thing that really stood out to me, and this is the first time I've seen this, is the fact it has two of the vacuum brush rollers. So everything's getting double brushed and it sucks in this way. So I really haven't noticed any tangles at all. And I got women in this house. Another thing that was kind of cool versus the Ecovacs is both of them have a way to put in a solution. So some kind of cleaning product. The Ecovacs is one tank for one solution. This one has two, so you could put in an all purpose cleaner and then a specialty one for hardwood floors or like pet specific cleaners. So that's really cool. Just overall, I'm incredibly happy with it. If you are in the market for something like this, this is definitely one worth checking out. And if you want to check out this one, do check out my link down below to go ahead and learn more. So getting into it, my main instance that I have right here is installed via Unraid just using Docker. So if I go over here to Docker, you can see that I have it right here. If I click on this, just to kind of show you my settings, it does run on the port 8200. I'm not going to go for over the full setup. It's a doc. I'll put a Docker compose down below, making it nice and easy for you. We have the path for the backups, which I created a whole separate share specifically for that. So eventually I will use this to kind of move data in between these different pools that I have. And then we have the source. This source path just points to basically the root of all my shares. So I could see just about anything. So I could select particular folders and things to actually back them up. We have an encryption key, some additional stuff, our web service password, and that's really about it. When you spin it up, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. Granted, you won't have any backups here from the get go. And you can see right now, these are my two kind of cloud backups which are completely encrypted for things that are super important to me, including image, which is all my photos and Nextcloud, which is really important data, mostly consisting of like files, documents, things that I don't really categorize into uh, my media shares. And overall, the UI is really nice too. If I go over here and I do use old UI, the first time I saw it, it looked a little bit something, uh oh, it looked a little bit something like this. I was not a fan. I kind of just looked over it. It wasn't that big of a deal to me. Granted, it's a great tool. Let's go ahead and click new UI, go back to this. Overall, this just looks a lot cleaner. It looks a lot better to me. But now for the functionality, again, I have some backups here, so I can start the backup right now. So if I did a bulk upload of things and I wanted it to be immediately backed up, I could click that. 
If I click this little pencil icon, this will run us through kind of the initial setup that I did for this specific instance. So you create your backup name. For me, this is image backup. From there, you could go continue and you could pick your backup destination. For this, I just did Google Drive. You do a simple sign on and it links up pretty quick. You don't need to generate API keys or anything like that, which is nice. It'll automatically fill in this auth ID for the path. You, As you saw when I was kind of going through it earlier, I have duplicati image and that's where everything will go. So if I continue, this is where you pick your source data. So mine is gonna be under images, which is my images share and library. So it's just that specific organized structure of how image handles those backups. There are filters, there's exclude options. So temporary files, you can exclude some things. And over here under source data, again, this is that source mount. So I can see just about everything going on, especially if I go here under source, I can see all my shares there so I can change that as need be. Continue, we have our schedule. So I have this run every day at 11 p.m. And then next we will have options. So our, my size for each individual file is gonna be 50 megabytes. So there's quite a few of them. You can customize the actual retention, but I just keep it on the smart backup retention for now, which is one every seven days, one a week for four weeks, and then one a month for 12 months, which this seems pretty good to me. And then we do have some advanced options if that is something you want to do. So you can get real nitty gritty on how you have all this set up. If I hit submit, there we go, that is my backup. And then an important thing is actually being able to restore that data. So to do that, all I do, go up here, restore, hit start. So I'd pick the specific thing that I want to restore from. So for example, in this next cloud backup, if I go restore, it's gonna load the files that are available to me and we can see the specific backup. And actually, as you can see here, this latest backup was 263, but if we look a couple days ago, it was 262. So I added just a little bit of data there and it didn't create a whole new separate backup of 260 gigs. It just uploads the file differences between the backups so it doesn't take up a absolute crazy amount of space if you do run daily backups. But if I do select the latest one, I could go into our files here. And then right here we have the Movo ad for this video specifically. And then if I wanted to, I can go ahead and grab the demo footage, for example, click continue. And then we have our restore options. So I can restore it to a specific location back onto the server. Or if I pick location, I can restore it somewhere else on my NAS. So for example, if I go to source and just for this, let's say I just threw it right into my app data directory, I hit submit. And there we go, the restore pro or restore task is now in progress. And it does take a little bit of time because it does have to actually pull from the cloud, extract multiple zip files, rebuild it and all that. So depending on the actual file size, it might take it a minute. You can see we got about 60 megabytes to go. We can see our logs here. So we have a bunch of these uh, uh, git commands running. And if I drop one down, you can say git completed, got the exact block that it needed. And there it goes. So it is done. So if I went and checked that out, for example, if I go over to my shares into app data, we could see right there that the file has been backed up. If I open it up, here we go, sweet deal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the console. Now this is very cool. I do wish, I absolutely wish that this was something that was self-hostable. It's a business, they gotta make money, they gotta lock down features, I understand. But if I could self-host this, that would be, it would make this a top tier tool. This is on the cloud and basically what is actually going on here is this instance is installed on Unraid and I can't really use this to manage other machines. For every single machine I have, I need to have a separate instance of Duplicati installed onto it, including desktop computers, things like that, and have them kind of manage their own backups. And then from there, I could use kind of their cloud dashboard here to link all the machines together and actually view them and manage them this way. So you can see right now I have one total machine with 14 backups. If I go over here to machines, you could see the one unraid machine that I have online, a bunch of info. Overall, it's some pretty cool stuff. Now it says I want a trial here. I think they did that automatically. So if I go to their website and go to pricing, we can see it is free for five machines. So you can use the cloud version of five machines. Of course, you don't have to use the cloud thing, but it is free up to five, so that's pretty cool. And then if you have a business, you gotta make some money, so there, there are options in that regard. Now, when I first started checking this out, I thought that it would be kinda like I install it on Unraid and then there's like 
client side applications that I can install on like my desktop computer and things like that, and just have it work that way. Kind of similar to Nextcloud in a way, but that's not really the case. So for example, I'm on Mac OS right now. Don't judge me. And I want to install this. I want to back up self-host back up my own stuff from Mac OS onto either, let's say my Unread machine, Google Cloud, something. What I would do is I would head over to platform and I would go over to downloads. I would download this for Mac OS. And then when I install the application here and then actually fire it up, we're going to hit open. Basically what it's gonna do here is fire up up here. If I go open, it's gonna open up a new web browser in a new blank instance. So completely kind of separated from everything, unless if I go ahead and register it. So if I did that, I just click to register, finish the connection, should link up fairly automatically, register the machine, go to the app. And now you can see I have two machines. But if I get out of here and I go back to actually set up a backup on the desktop version, I would go add backup and it's fairly similar process. You can import files. So if you already have a bunch of backups, you can uh, export those, save them. So if something happens, you can make that real easy, but add a new backup, MacBook backup. And this is my home directory to drive. And obviously there's way more than drive. I'll kind of show you that in the next step here. We have a password for the actual encryption. So we'll set something moderately secure and then go continue. We'll hit not now. And here are the actual kind of backup destinations that you could go ahead and pick from. So we have the file system. So store on the local, there's windows shares, web dev, SSH. I mean, the possibilities are up to your imagination, but again, the point of this for me is to use up that cloud storage that I'm paying for. So we'll go Google drive. And then for the folder path, this is going to be duplicati and we'll do just MacBook. And then from there, we got our auth ID. So we'll just use this to go ahead and sign in and continue there. We're good to go. And you can see that fill in. So if I test that connection, oh, it's being weird. Let's try that again. And it's gonna ask me to create that folder. So we will do so. And there we go, the connection to successful. So if we continue from there, I'll go not now. Now I pick what I actually want to have backed up. So this is our source, our source path. I'll probably just select, uh, well, we're gonna need to allow it. Allow it. Oh, we are have to allow everything. <laughs> select home. I can see everything we got going on there. So I'll just do the entire home directory. I think that should be sufficient for what I'm trying to back up. So we'll go continue. Um, 1 PM is probably good. I usually have it up and open around that time. So we will go continue and we'll just keep all the defaults here for retention. We'll do the smart retention again and hit submit. So there we go. And then when you start your very first backup, again, this is from the Mac, you can see it's that local IP address. I just click on start, and then it's gonna go ahead and verify, verify the data and start that process. And you can see it's finding all the files. There's probably quite a bit on there. It's gonna start spamming me if it can access things. Oh no, I have Nextcloud in there. I'm gonna have to edit that to not do that. Here, stop, abort. So for the source data, instead of selecting all the home, I'm gonna select the things that I actually should. So it's honestly mostly the things on my desktop for this setup that I find myself wanting backups of. So that honestly right there is probably pretty dang good, at least for just a nice backup of that. So we'll continue, continue, and we should all be good to go. So now let's go ahead and uh, start that backup manually. So 57 gigs, that's not nearly as bad as it was about to be at not that quick. So it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to let that do what it needs to do. And again, if I head on over here, give this a little refresh, we can see I have my two machines. They're both online. This doesn't have any status because I haven't really backed up anything yet. And overall, we're, we're looking pretty good. And this will shoot up a little bit once that computer backup finishes. But yeah, that is my current kind of cloud backup solution. I don't like using the cloud, but I'm paying for some of it. So I might as well at least upload encrypted data to it. Pretty soon I'm gonna work on a video for my full actual offsite backup solution. I got a little NAS that I'm gonna throw just Proxmox backup server, just bare metal, have that at a family member's house, and that's gonna be my future backup solution. So if you want a full video on that, do let me know down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And again, with all that, have a good day and goodbye.